As the ranks of retired union members have swelled, so have the needs for benefits management. Labor First stepped in to provide health benefits and advocacy services to retirees of multi-employer group benefit plans. John Dolzak is Labor First's chairman, and with his family history of union management and entrepreneurship, he has helped make Labor First one of New Jersey's fastest growing companies. My name is John Dolzak, and I am chairman and chief officer of Labor First. Um, I come from a proud labor household. I'm third generation. My father and my grandfather were principal officers of Teamster unions in the Philadelphia area. If you grow up in a union household, you see things a little differently than your friend or your neighbor next door that maybe grew up in a non-union household. Day one, since we were founded in 2005, taking those same values and principles that I learned growing up and instilled them with the culture inside labor first. So my mentor, obviously my father. Uh, my father, like I mentioned earlier, he was a Teamsters business manager for over 30 years. In fact, he was the youngest Teamsters principal officer ever at 24 years old. But besides my dad, I have to say my grandfather. Um, uh, my papa passed away about eight, 10 years ago, but he started, he's the only person in my family to start a business on his own. And he had a very successful business. He's a wallpaper hanger and paper hanger. And growing up and, and watching how much he enjoyed just the time and the ability to be with his family and to grow that business and to help others. And I think that was the most rewarding thing, of, thing that I learned and that, that I take today is making money is a very good thing, but to help others enrich their life. Um, and whether they're early or starting a family or whatever that may be, but to give back to the people that are loyal and to support you, I think that's, that's one of the, the best things that I've learned from my grandfather. The, the one story that really uh, sticks out in my head is it was about three years ago, um, one of our participants in our group, um, an older woman who was alone, her husband passed, had a situation, it was about 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, where she was having chest pains. Uh, for some reason, because she felt so comfortable dealing with her advocate, Caitlin, Caitlin was the first person she called. Caitlin immediately told her to hang up, call 911. Caitlin then responded by driving over to this participant's home, waiting there with, him, with her for the ambulance, driving to the hospital with them, sitting there at the hospital until her family was able to come. And that was about 3.30, 4 in the morning. Everything was okay with this participant. It was a, just a minor panic attack. But, you know, the, the response to that, not just with that participant, but with her family members. She had a younger cousin and a nephew that were also participants in that group, that client. And, you know, when that gets around to the other membership, the other participants in the plan, that when we sit here and we tell you that we are your advocates for life, and regardless of what the situation is, we are here to help and support you. You have our cell phone numbers. You have their direct phone numbers. But then when they see that in real life and they see that no matter what was going on at that moment, our loyalty to that participant was foremost and most important. Another good question. You know, I think it's a combination of timing and luck. Um, timing in, in, in the fact that we, we fit a need. We fit a need. There's a, there's a huge hole in this market, in the multi-employer, public sector, union, trust, health fund world, with retiree benefits. Um, most funds have been cutting them or cutting back or dropping their participants from coverage altogether. Retirees are very involved participants in these groups. By doing something like that, the fallout for many of the fund leaders is great. We've been able to not only identify the opportunity to reduce cost and reduce liability, and it's quite simply by just leveraging our buying power and accessing individual federally subsidized plans that have less retention than the traditional group market. But none of that would have worked without the layer of service and advocacy. Retirees and many, of our, and many of our groups are voting members, and they outnumber the active participants that are working. So a change to the retired participants in any shape or form can have negative impacts across all spectrums of that group. What we were able to do is to get not only the decision makers of these funds, but the participants themselves comfortable and happy with the service that we offer. Well... As we've moved forward and as, we've, as we grow, well, we launched our private exchange platform earlier this year. And if we look at the Morristown, the Cherry Hill, Marlton, Medford local community, there's been a big gap in the 
the senior health exchange business. And, you know, a lot of participants and a lot of people, whether they're part of a group or just on their own, it's very difficult to go to a website or a computer and know that you walked away with the plan that not only meets your financial needs, but your health needs. Uh, it's real easy to pick a plan at a low premium. It doesn't offer you the coverage that you need. So what we're trying to offer is a new way of looking at the healthcare exchange world to give membership and participants, regardless of where they come from or their background, the ability to go meet with someone face to face to not only enroll in that plan, but to have that advocate for life. Um, we believe that the healthcare exchange market as it grows is going to go away from the IT based uh, computer web based infrastructure and more into that face-to-face -face advocate role where you can go talk to the person that is advising you on health care. As you age, as seniors age, your conditions change, your needs change. Um, and to go and to be able to have that ability to go sit one-on-one -on -one with your dedicated advocate to go over anything, whether it's your health care plan, your prescription coverage, social security questions, Medicare questions, you need a dental plan. That, to me, is really what's going to start helping this entire community. If uh, my pop out, my grandfather, was here right now, I would yeah, if you don't have give him a big hug and coverage. tell him thank you for everything that he did for me. He, uh, he always believed in me, thought I was the greatest thing in the world, and that's important because that confidence stayed with me. Um, even though it was a family member and... You know, maybe it was my grandfather just thinking I'm the apple of his eye. It stayed with me. And that confidence and that wanting to make him proud, even though he wasn't here, was always in my head. And every little success that I had along the way, I'd look up and i thank him. And, you know, I, I wish he was here so I could tell him that today. Um, and my father, I'm blessed enough to see frequently. Um, you know, same thing. Just thanks, Dad, for everything that you've done along the way.